Welcome, everybody. It's time to grab your board, swim out into the sea of ideas, and see if you can catch a wave. Like that sales pipeline starting to curl up over the horizon there. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. Appreciate you joining us. For those of you joining us here, as usual, every week, uh, Thursday at 1130 a.m. Pacific, 230 p.m. Eastern. Thanks for those of you that are joining us live. Join us every week live. I appreciate that very much. For those of you joining us on the podcast from the iTunes Store, the Google Play, thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. And every episode of Sales Pipeline Radio is available past, present, future on salespipelineradio.com. Every week are featuring some of the best and brightest names in B2B sales and marketing. Today is no different. Very, very excited to have with us today Ravid Turner. He's the CEO of Caliber Mind, a company doing some really, really interesting work in the marketing intelligence space. Ravid, thanks very much for joining us today. Yes, Matt. Thanks for having me. We recently produced a paper together uh, on how CMOs can lead the revenue re- revolution and focusing was on an area that I think a lot of B2B CMOs don't put nearly enough focus on but has become very clear to us that it is a direct path to improving revenue, attainability, and success. Talk a little bit about data strategy and, and data intelligence and, and why it's become so important for B2B marketers and B2B leaders. That's correct, Matt. And uh, yes, um, uh, the B2B buying journey um, has changed a lot in the last few years. We see more buyers in deals. 60% of that journey is today uh, uh, is digital before they even pick up the phone or email the sales rep. We see millennials entering you know, the workforce and making decisions. So everything we know about B2B kind of change, yet... Uh, CRMs, marketing automation platforms kind of uh, stay the same. What we see is a need for what we call marketing intelligence, which is basically taking automation to the next level. Um, and the way we look at this is we democratize uh, marketing and sales data for line of business managers. Uh, so you no longer need to be a data engineer or data scientist to, to really make sense of data, to be able to acquire new buyers, grow revenue, and improve the customer experience. And uh, the paper we produced together is basically, I think, the next evolution uh, where we see marketing kind of eating sales and the need for CMOs to prove impact and and grow revenue. So not just top of the funnel kind of vanity metrics, uh, used to be MQL, SQL, whatnot. Today's MQL is closed one. And we also seeing this kind of rippling into post-sale where marketing is now in charge of the full customer lifecycle. And I think that presents a new data challenge. Traditional system just not able to see all the data between your marketing sales and even customer success tech. So how do you bring well, all the data together? Let's talk about that disconnect because I, I think you're absolutely right. There have got demand generation marketers who are thinking in terms of campaigns and channels, and there's usually a marketing operations team that is focused on the data and analytics. There's been a disconnect and there continues to be a disconnect between those two groups. Why does that exist? And I'm curious, you know, what are some of the keys you see to helping those, those two groups work together more closely so they, can, so they can create better conversations, experiences for their customers and prospects? Great question. I think lots of it, it also depends on the uh, CMO's background. I think for uh, CMOs that's coming from demand uh, background, uh, there is less of a disconnect. They used to um, operate with data and make data-driven uh, um, decisions. However, some organizations where we see this disconnect is CMO is operating on a more strategic level where the demand and ops teams are more tactical. And many of our customers, when we talk to the teams, the demand and ops, they feel like the C-suite and the VPs are not fully aware of what it takes to get the data in shape, what it takes to be able to qualify leads in real time, to score accounts, come back from a marketing event with a few hundreds of leads and be able to immediately enrich them and, and all this kind of what we call the, the, the data operation around marketing and sales, that's not always clear to the C and the VP uh, suite. And they're looking for the KPIs, they're looking for the reporting, they're looking for the analytics and everything, all the strategic tools. But without solving the foundation of marketing and sales data, that's becoming a much harder task. And we see ops kind of spending the days in what we call kind of spreadsheet hell. Uh, and just mm-hmm. pushing data, you know, back and forth between their CRMs, marketing automation, and like 15, 20 other tools. What we see is we see success with customers that they basically able to streamline the marketing and sales operation and grow revenue much faster this way. So we're talking today on Sales Pipeline Radio with Ravi Turner. He's the CEO and founder of Caliber Mind. You can uh, check out more about what they're doing at CaliberMind.com. I encourage you to go up there at the very top. You'll see a link to the uh, CMO uh, Revenue Revolution paper that we wrote uh, together with Caliber Mind. Some good uh, recommendations in there. One of the things we talk about in that paper, Ravi, is 
the fact that if you connect your data, just having your data connected doesn't solve the problem. You have to know what data you're looking for, what use cases, what stories you're looking for, so you can actually connect the dots and have uh, sort of more engaging conversations. And so talk a little bit about why it's so important to have that, to have your strategy and your customer personas nailed down before you figure out what data is important. Calvin, man, we, we say, hey, you have to collect the dots before you can connect the dots. And we've seen marketing teams rushing to build personas and build, you know, content strategy and whatnot. Lots of the work happening right now is qualitative. Um, and don't get me wrong, you know, I think that the right balance is between qualitative and quantitative. But just to go and conduct a bunch of uh, buyer interviews and build buyer personas, um, maybe even have a discussion on your, what's your ideal customer profile is not going to really help to operationalize this. Um, I think what Calvo Mind does, it adds another kind of operational level on top of it and say, hey, what if we can go back to your data and see what the data tells us about your personas and content model? What if we can look at all the historic data from your win-loss analysis, look at the accounts, score them, profile them, and build this bottom-up versus top-down? There is no longer, hey, I think our personas or I think our ideal customer profile is X, Y, Z, but there is a process and validation with the data. And once we're able to support marketing teams with what we say, operationalizing your, your personas and your content models, then we can, I think, advance into the, the data science part. And that's some of it is we've heard a lot about predictive um, last few years. I think predictive kind of fell in the past because we just didn't have all the data in one place. And by having a strong data foundation where you can see historic data from your CRM, you can see your engagement data from your marketing automation, you might even be able to see some intent signals from some of the intent vendors and see um, target accounts outside your database. Um, you are able to build much more granular personas and content work and then get in to start matching them on a programmatic level, which is which persona, what content, what time, and even what channel. Again, as long as you actually get all the data in one place, and that's the data foundation that Calibre Mind provides. So let's talk about the difference between data intelligence and data management. I mean, you and I have covered, talked about this a few different times, where I think a lot of companies, when it comes to data management, they're focused on comprehensive data. They're focused on the most complete, up-to-date data. But comprehensiveness isn't necessarily a, a direct line towards results. Talk a little bit about that gap between making, like, between companies focused on having the most data and then just making sure you've got the right data to take action. I mean, yeah, there is tons of information out there on data management and data cleansing and data hygiene and whatnot. It's been there, you know, for some time now, and we still see companies failing with it because of the velocity of the data, because of companies with high lead volume, and you know, that's got to be kind of real-time and streamlined. What we are seeing, you know, in the most progressive kind of high-performing marketers moving from talking about just data management to data intelligence, which is, hey, if I can have all these processes actually automated in the background, I don't have to throw ops people at this. Um, by the way, some customers just uh, making these IT projects, right? And paying lots and lots of money to try and fix their data with IT. Most of yep. the uh, IT data projects we know actually fail because of this. What if we can have an intelligent system that can take any lead coming in the door, your anonymous website traffic, actually make sense of it, cleans, dedupe, merge, and then go into higher level of working with this data, which is the segmentation and the insight. What if we can then feed all your analytics tools, so BI, or become better in attribution by having all these data fixed, you know, in real time? That's what we call data intelligence. And that's where we're seeing the market kind of adding and what some of the, the more progressive marketing teams are doing today, which is moving from data management, kind of stay in the, I call it like the plumbing, right, to um, the next evolution of, hey, we just have a backbone foundation of, of data integrity and orchestration system like Calibermine. It just takes care of all of this automatically, so we don't have to worry about it. We're going to take a quick break, pay some bills. We'll be right back with more with Razeev Turner. He's the CEO of Calibre Mind. We're going to be talking a little more about that intelligence, talking about how to translate and sort of make this accessible uh, for companies, and uh, lots more. We'll be right back on Sales Pipeline Radio. In a world where the speed of innovation and change in B2B marketing has never been greater, the only thing bigger is the need for clarity, for a blueprint, for a guide to what's really working. And how about a way to apply it specifically today to increase sales pipeline growth, velocity, and most of all, conversion. That's what you'll find in the Modern Marketer's Field Guide. 
And amazingly, you can download it for free. HeinzMarketing.com, just like it sounds, H-E-I-N-Z-M-A-R-K-E-T-I-N-G. It encompasses the entire sales and marketing cycle, but in quick bursts with lots of specific, actionable ideas, strategies, tactics you can put to work right away, like today. The loaded table of contents helps you narrow in and tackle a problem. And it's something you can come back to over and over again as a reference guide. Why not download your free copy of the Modern Marketer's Field Guide? It's free. HeinzMarketing.com, just like it sounds. H-E-I-N-Z, Marketing. Dot com. All right, back to Matt and his guest. Thank you very much, Paul. Appreciate everyone joining us today on Sales Pipeline Radio. Coming up in the next couple of weeks, the next two weeks, in fact, we are going to be tableau heavy. We've got Mike Braun. He is the uh, VP of, the, of Marketing Operations. Hopefully he's listening to this call and learning more about data intelligence as well. We're going to learn a little more about how Mike is managing the uh, marketing tech stack and marketing ops for Tableau as it grows from what was a very small company into a large publicly traded company. And then the following week, we've got his boss, Elisa Fink. She is the CMO of Tableau Software, learning more as well about how to grow and how marketing changes and how you manage marketing differently for startups versus large companies. And then the following week, we've got Dave Gerhard. He's the VP of Marketing for Drift. If you haven't heard of Drift, uh, you got to check out these guys. They are on a mission to eliminate the landing page and increase the conversations that are happening between customers and prospects. Today, we got a little more time. With Raviv Turner, Raviv is the CEO and founder of Caliber Mind, and you know, Raviv, I think people that are listening to this, uh, this this episode so far, managing the data on the back end can get quite tricky, can get quite technical, and that might be where we actually lose a lot of CMOS. Is it important for CMOS to really start to understand and grok this themselves? Um, you know, is it okay if they have a trusted counterpart that understands this? I've heard some companies talk about actually hiring a, a chief marketing technology officer, a CMTO, that can really sort of do the work to map strategy and intelligence to the ops on the back end. What, what are you seeing the most successful B2B CMOs do today? And Matt, if, if we agree uh, about what you state in, in the paper about the revenue revolution, G, your data strategy is your B2B growth strategy. And I think that's what CMOs are tasked with today. How do we uh, impact uh, revenue? How do we grow sales? And in order to do this, you know, that requires some uh, basic foundation of data and automation in place. Like I said, you know, CMOs coming from demand background uh, might have easier time. However, it used to be difficult, you know, to really make sense of data, where you needed to maybe even hire a team of data engineers and data scientists and build a marketing database then bring the BI folks or the IT folks to build your reports and analytics. That's no longer the case. So you have, you have uh, systems like CaliberMind today that with one click connector can basically connect your entire marketing and sales stack and then layer some analytics and reporting on top without even your ops team writing a line of code or doing SQL or even business objects, right? So I think technology is helping us to clo actually close the data skills gap that we're seeing within marketing organizations. Uh, some of our customers also bring in their agencies. Some uh, marketers uh, uh, used to outsource their um, the data integrity and data needs, and that's perfectly fine. We have some great agency partners that can actually run the system for you, or we can go and train your team. Closing the data skills gap with technology, but not just with technology, also with, with people and processes, I think that's, that's a big deal. And we're working on all fronts to close it, not just with technology, but also with our agency partners, just providing some basic education to marketers on how to go from what we call data zero to data hero. Some of it is just best practices, like, hey, you got to use campaign IDs in your um, Salesforce, so you got to do UTM for tracking so you can come back and attribute and impact and improve our value. Uh, that's, that's, you know, a big deal for lots of the CMOs we're talking to, which is how do I impact revenue? How do I prove value? And again, it keeps coming back to the data foundation and being able to track and report on every marketing activity. I want to encourage folks that are listening you want to learn more about this, the B2B CMO revenue revolution, definitely go to CaliberMind.com. Uh, you'll see a link at the top to download the executive guide we're talking about. You can also just go directly to CaliberMind.com slash CMO dash revenue dash revolution to get this executive guide on B2B CMOs leading the revenue revolution. And uh, one of the challenges we've talked about a lot is, you know, you, you guys, I mean, every time I talk to you, every time I get into the product, I realize just how important data intelligence is and how important this approach is, it's an emerging market. This is not a category that has existed before. Can you talk a little bit about, like, you know, what is, you know, how hard it is sometimes to 
to really be a pioneer in a market like this? And what are some of the keys you found to helping create greater discovery and to really sort of challenge the status quo of the customers that need you the most? I like to say, you know, if there is already a kind of gardener's magic quadrant for that, <laughs> then the opportunity uh, might be gone, right? So you're right in the sense that it's, it's early, but we don't think it's too early. We've seen automation platforms uh, being around for a few years. There are some integration platforms that let Ops team actually integrate the data. We're just taking it to the next level, providing some of the decision-making logic and some of the data profiling. So, hey, marketing can now make data-driven decisions. Our kind of core group of customers uh, are customers that's been using automation, both marketing and sales automation, for some time now. So I want to say, hey, we have, we have what, 50%, 60% of the market already been uh, used to uh, marketing automation for a few years and they're now looking for to take this to the next level. And the way we think about us fitting in the stack is, hey, we have our CRM as our system of record. We have our marketing automation as a system of engagement. But then what we are missing in order to streamline our marketing and sales and grow revenue is what we call system of intelligence, or even system of action, right? Which is, hey, there is just so much data out there. We used, we used to be data deprived. Now I say, hey, we are data blind. Uh, the data is not a problem anymore. There's just too much of it. How do we focus on the data points that matter, you know, to move the, the metrics and the KPIs for the CMO that matter? And then it's no longer enough. You mentioned Tableau, you know. Uh, we have some customers using Tableau. It's a great uh, BI and analytics tool. But, hey, I'm now getting a, a beautiful report and a dashboard. Then, hey, what if I want to take this, create a segment, and go and target key accounts or activate them on some social networks and advertise to them? That's not possible to do with the data today, and, and that's what we're seeing is the kind of missing layer, which is the more progressive marketers, the more successful marketers, they want to not just study the data, but actually go and act on this data. These are some of the systems like Calibermind basically lets you put the data to work. Um, so yes, it's early, but we're already getting some strong adoption from IT and SaaS sector. We've seen some manufacturing with B2B retail websites where they have a big digital operation and they just need help with the data. The early opportunities, even if they're not really early, is you know those organizations that take advantage of it typically see an even greater competitive advantage. So seeing that in the market already for companies that are embracing the data intelligence movement and having a much greater impact for their business, their marketing is more efficient, they're impacting revenue in a greater way, so it's definitely an opportunity to take advantage of. I want to thank our guest today, Raviv Turner, the CEO of Calibermind. Definitely check him out at calibermind.com. Download that guide to the B2B CMO revenue revolution. We got to run. We'll be back next week with more from Tableau, more on marketing operations, marketing leadership, and all things around the B2B sales and marketing. For my great producer, Paul, this is Matt Hines. Thanks for joining us again on Sales Pipeline Radio. You've been listening to another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio brought to you by the good folks at Matt Hines Marketing right here on the Funnel Radio Channel for at-work listeners like you.